Here we are, just a few miles outside Skibbereen Town, at the home of Ireland's greatest and most successful rowing club, Skibbereen Rowing Club. This is the rowing club that gave us Ireland's first ever rowing Olympic medals in 2016. This is the rowing club that is home to Gary and Paul O'Donovan, the two men that won those historic silver medals in Rio five years ago. This is the rowing club that has created world champions, European champions, World Cup medalists, under 23 world medalists, junior world medalists. Here in this rowing club, the rowers have won more national titles than any other club in the country. This is the rowing club that is also home to Dominic Casey, the greatest Irish rowing coach of his time. This is the club that takes in young boys and young girls from all around the locality, all around the different townlands and equips them with the talents, the skills, the self-belief and the confidence to go out on the water and to take on the best in the world. This is the rowing club that has transformed Irish rowing beyond all recognition in the last couple of years. This is the greatest sports club in Ireland today. I think it's time we got to know this club a little bit better. Donovan in the stroke seat, he is pulling like a dog now. No, Gary really behind him, the bows are lifting out of the water, they are really pulling through. Ireland up there in the silver medal position, Paul Griffin in the stroke seat, Niall O'Toole sits behind him, Eugene Coakley in the two seat and Richard Archibald in the bow seat. But that's a silver medal for Ireland and a really terrific performance from Emily Hegarty in the stroke seat, new to the crew, Fiona Murta, Emer Lamb, and Efrik Kill, they're silver medalists. Our tour guide on the day we visit the famous club on the banks of the River Island is Denise Walsh, a world-class rower in her own right who won silver at the 2017 European Championships and she has also won more national titles for the club than anyone else. And what better place to start our journey into the heart of Skibbereen Rowing Club than with a visit to the Wall of Champions that greets you on entry to the clubhouse. Um, I think when everyone comes in the door, they basically, it's the first thing they see. Um, it used to be kind of like an old blackboard, which was only as far as maybe here when I started rowing. Um, when all of the athletes going to the Olympics actually started rowing, it was like just this kind of size. And since it's expanded a lot and hopefully we'll be filling it up again. Um, but I think just for the young ones, like they come in and they see names and then, do you know, they hear us talking about people or they hear some of the coaches saying, oh, this person or whatever. And they're kind of able to put names to the faces and stuff. And I suppose you aspire to be what's come before you like. What's come before at Skibbereen Rowing Club is a veritable who's who of Irish rowing. Nuala Lupton and Dominic Casey were the trailblazers, with Nuala, the club's current president, winning the club's first national title in 1976. Many more have followed, and now the West Cork Club is far and away the most successful in Ireland. The secret to the club's success? Hard work is a key component. So this is the weights corridor into the weight room. Um, so these would be some of the older plates, some of the ones we still use anyway. Um, they'd be like, I think it's 13 kilos and 15 kilos, so the blues. Like Dominic used to have a sheet written out for us of how much everything weighs. So the greens I think were 13 and the blues 15, something like that. And then the small greens and the small blues would be like four and five, something like that. And these yeah. are some of these like fly fields off boats and Oh yeah, different... we never actually use them now because that's what I'm <laughs> So we use the, the them ones like that used, they made up for us. Yeah. Um, and this leads down so to... Yeah, into the weight room, yeah. So... Um, it's a lot less crowded now I suppose because we had to separate everything out last year. Um, so the boys only use this at the moment if one on one or whatever. Um, and then two leg press machines and then a pull up bar. So pretty simple but like it works. Skibbering Rowing Club would send seven members to the Tokyo Olympic Games. That's six rowers and of course coach Dominic Casey. 
Olympic silver medalist from Rio, Paula Donovan, will look to go one better when he teams up with fellow skib oarsman Fintan McCarthy in the men's lightweight double. Paul and Fintan were in the boat together when claiming world gold in 2019. This year they have added European gold to their medal collection. Paul's brother Gary, also a Rio silver medalist, will be held in reserve. Emily Hegarty takes her seat in the Irish women's four while Aoife Casey goes in the lightweight double. And reserve Lydia Heafy makes up the magnificent Skibbereen 7. There's nothing fancy about the facilities at Skibbereen Rowing Club, no special ingredient. The weights room used to get world, European and Olympic medalists race ready is like something from a bygone era. But, as Denise says, It works. And if it ain't broke, rowing though isn't just a weightlifting contest. There's also the small matter of hopping into a boat and hitting out onto the open, often choppy water. The Skibbereen Rowing Club Boathouse, which is a hive of activity on the morning of our visit, opens directly onto the River Island. While there's no secret recipe to Skibbereen Rowing Club's success, there is most certainly something in the water. So this is the boathouse, where it all happens. Um, so everyone would come through that door and then get your boat well, it's on, um, walk out and straight out on server. So it's nice and high today now, so it's, you can kind of, there's no banks or anything on the water, um, on the river, but yeah. And just on boats, just, uh, there's so many different types of boats from a single right up to single. Yeah. Middle. I think people are actually surprised at the length of the boats. I know, yeah, because even a single is so long. Um, like these are all, let's say, some of the training skulls and like, you know, you need two people to carry them, especially for the younger ones, like, Whereas like then you go up to an eight and it's crazy long, yeah. Um, but they're so light as well, like so do you know it's only like fourteen kilos or something for a boat for a skull. So it's pretty light. And how does it work? So the the athletes are getting ready, they're coming out yeah. of the clubhouse, they come here and they get their oars on the boat and then launch. Yeah, so Wellington's on, because we are yeah. Then they grab their oars from one of the racks, whichever so like these would be the younger ones up to the older ones and then straight down put their blades down, bottle of water, come back up. They like stand into the road here, carry it up, and out they go. What the club may lack in modern gym equipment, it more than makes up for in the ease at which the rowers can access the Island River. Oh, so important. Like, I think we underestimate how lucky we are, I suppose. Um, like, it's just us here, and on most days you can get out. Like, as in, obviously, the weather is the only thing, but that's everywhere with rowing. But um, as long as it's the water's coming in, head down river, head up to town, if it's high tide, it's really, yeah. It's a great immunity. Basically from here down to Old Court is about two kilometers and then you just head straight down. You could keep going to Baltimore if you wanted. I know people have. Um, so normally, let's say a train day though, they go down and they could go about 9K. That'd be about the kind of maximum that you'd send any of the under 19 athletes like. And back here, yeah. So like they'd get 18K without stopping if they wanted to on a good day like, yeah. What are the rules in River Dean? Side, yeah, 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 yeah. We always, uh, so the bow is facing this way, right hand to the bank all the time. So right hand this way, turn below, come back on that side and come in like that. So in a loop. That's the ideal scenario anyway. Obviously, there's a lot of parts to the jigsaw that makes Skibbereen Rowing Club the best and most successful rowing club in the country. And an important part of this jigsaw is right behind me now. It's the River Island. On this river, the Skibbereen rowers, they learn to row. They row to race and they race to win. This is where all the Olympians started, right here on the River Island. Go back many moons ago, the likes of Gary and Paul O'Donovan, our Olympic silver medalist from 2016, they chased Timmy Harnady, Richard Coakley and Eugene Coakley on this river. Those three men were Olympians in the noughties. Of all the Olympic rowers going to this year's Olympics, they all started right here on the River Island. Now on the Island River, Denise, this is where it all happens. So, how far down would rowers normally go? Um, I suppose about 9k down this way. So, the club is down there. You'd always go to Old Court Corner, that's normally where they stop, get ready to go, and then they either head down that direction or head down this direction. So, the boat chart is just down there where Dominic and Teddy worked. Well, Dominic worked, Teddy worked. Um, so, we'd always go past there and then you'd kind of turn the corner, stop, get ready to go, and then straight down the river. And the beauty of this river, too, is 
in all conditions the roars know how to roar whether it's choppy whether it's calm and that prepares the roars then when they go to different regattas whether they're national regattas or international regattas they know how to roar in any type of conditions yeah i guess like this little patch here is kind of our like little duel because like when it is rough like you normally can circulate old court new court so at least you can kind of always get out like all going well yeah What's so they might not go down river but they just stay loops here and what's your favorite part of the river i think townway is lovely like if you're in a skull by yourself like it's really nice to go down there and back like um but obviously like down the river is just a great thing to have like because a lot of clubs aren't that lucky to have that big stretch of river like so we are very lucky like and i think when maybe hopefully when the kids that are rowing now get to go to regattas things like that they'll see how lucky we are as well So, having seen the championship board, the old school gym, the famous boat room, and having spent some time on the Island River, it's clear that there is no one singular element that drives the success of this great club. But what does Denise put the success down to? Um, I guess just simple work and enjoy it. And like everyone here, I think like works really hard and like, there's a load of volunteers and people that help you along the way and I think like even as a young kid you kind of look up to them and you I suppose you try and do your best because you want to make them happy as well like and then obviously as you go through the years then you have huge aspirations and you've kind of people to follow in as well and but there's always someone here to help and I think even like let's say if the internationals go away they always have a place to come home to and I think like it's still a good really good tight club that way and yeah I think it's just keep it simple and enjoy it and yeah, we all work together and just, I don't know, it's just a great place to be a part of. And this club has been home to so many local boys and girls, men and women over mm -hmm. the years. And you touched on a great point there. It's the community that's raised the athletes. This is a community effort. It's the coaches, it's the volunteers. Everyone plays a part in this huge jigsaw that has created the most successful rowing club in Ireland. Yeah, like as in all the people that volunteer, like sure the coaches, like you know, Shawnee there now, like sure he coached me when I was incoming and he's still coaching the beginners now. Do you know what I mean? Like people give their time and stuff. And I think like the club can't function without all the volunteers and stuff because you'd be surprised at how much goes into everything and like you know a regatta day something like that like hopefully we'll get them again but so much work goes into that kind of things and like you want to make the best experience for the kids that train here so hard you want to make it worthwhile as well for them and like all the parents and everything dropping them to and fro and everything like as in yeah it takes a, a lot of people yeah and what's so important too is that so many athletes give back to the club mm. like you've been an international world-class rower and you're coaching now as well um yeah no i sure i love the rowing club so i just want to help out as much as i can yeah um and i suppose if you're not rowing i feel like you want to be a part of it too like so yeah and what's the future for the club obviously we know with the tokyo olympics there's so many club members over there representing mm -hmm. flying the skipper and rowing flag but looking to the future yeah i think there's a great bunch of youngsters there now like they've really come on the past year i think they've all kind of committed to and like obviously they've had a really hard year with COVID and everything but I think they've kind of just come to the club as a separate place to whatever happening outside and like they just go down the river and they're like they're after becoming just such a really good hard work group so it's really exciting now that there'll be hopefully a new batch in a few years time 